Good afternoon. I'm going to show you how to do live planetary stacking and enhancement in SharpCap 4.1. This is the latest version of SharpCap 4.1 that dropped on November 20th, 2023. Uh, I do not happen to have a dark sky at the moment. It's the middle of the day. I only have a few minutes to show you this before I have to go back to work. Uh, so I'm going to use the high-speed test camera to demonstrate this. Uh, so you can do this as well uh, if you have some uh, raw planetary footage that you've recorded from your setup. So I'm going to go to test camera 2, high speed. And over on the right, uh, you'll see the, this uh, beautiful test image come up. But we're going to go to testing controls. And we're going to browse to a SER file, SER file of Jupiter that I have recorded in the past. And you'll see that SharpCap immediately begins playing that SIR file as though it were recording it live. So this is what it looks like uh, live from my 1100 Edge HD. You can see that the scene was pretty good. Um, Jupiter looks pretty stable. You can see some details. It's, uh, it's not too bad, but let's make it look better than that. We're going to go to Tools, Live Planetary Stacking and Enhancement Experimental. The first thing you'll see is Jupiter stops wiggling immediately. Down here, you'll notice uh, that we can set a stack length. So we're stacking frames up. And we can change the current, we can change the stack length, and uh, SharpCap will tell you how deep is the current stack, tell you how fast is it stacking frames, and it will tell you the display update rate. And I want you to realize that even though this looks like a still image, it is not it is still live. It is updating 20 at 20 FPS, almost 19 FPS. So this is changing 19 times a second. It's just that it's so stable it looks like a still image. So we can do even better than this. Um, we have a wavelet sharpening section and this takes a little getting used to. It's very easy to blow it out uh, but we can start to dial up uh, and start to see some more uh, detail in the image. And the first thing you'll notice as we dial up the sharpening is we also dial up the noise. But that's okay. We can just stack more frames. Let's stack, instead of 100 frames, let's stack 1,000 frames. And you'll see SharpCap sharp immediately start to stack up frames, and you'll notice that as these frames accumulate into the stack, the noise becomes less and less and less. So we're going to let that stack, and in the meantime, we're going to adjust our wavelet settings a little bit just to see some more detail. Again, it takes a little finesse, and it's also a matter of taste how far you want to go in trying to pull out detail. You can, of course, create artifacts. We'll, we'll leave it there. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is we can clean this up a little bit. Um, and also make it look a little better because our display histogram stretch is still live. So we, have, we see some ringing around the edge of the planet. We see some ringing uh, around uh, Europa here. Looks like uh, I need to do a little work on my collimation. That's okay. So I'm just going to take my black point and I'm going to raise it up a little bit to clip out that ringing. The other things that we can do is if we wanted to brighten the image any, my image here is pretty bright enough, but I can bring this down, bring my white point down, that would brighten the image up. I'm just going to leave it where it was. But we can put a little, let's call it inverse gamma in, by moving the midpoint to the right, and that will actually increase the contrast, and it increases that 3D effect that you see in Jupiter. So this is already looking really nice, but one of the problems of uh, astronomy cameras is they produce pretty washed out colors, even if you're using the appropriate uh, UV IR cut filter, which you should, or the infrared pollution is just going to completely wash out the colors. Uh, I have the right filter in, uh, but my colors are still washed out because that's what astronomy cameras do. Uh, so I'm just going to increase the saturation here. I'm going to jump that up to two. And now you can see that Jupiter looks really quite beautiful here. Perfectly stable, even though it's live, it's live updating 
If you wait long enough and watch it, the red spot will rotate out of view. Europa here will move uh, across the screen. Uh, and this is, this is really quite a, a nice result. Just to remind you, this is what it looks like live. And this, you can see all that noise goes away as our stack length starts to accumulate. Once we get up to a few hundred frames, up close to a thousand frames, as I've set, the noise decays away and you're left with this really beautiful, detailed, beautifully colored image of Jupiter. And obviously this will work on uh, Mars, this will work on Saturn, this will work on Venus. Um, it does rely on the uh, center of gravity calculation for stabilization. So this is not going to stabilize, for example, the surface of the moon. This is really for planetary viewing. Uh, by the way, this does not uh, interfere with your capture frame rate. If you decide to do high-speed capture for later post-processing, at least at the frame rates that I've tested, uh, I like to image at a pretty low frame rate compared to a lot of people. I typically use 30 frames per second, and this does not slow down the write speed to disk at all. So uh, it's really quite nice. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can write out a time lapse. So I'm going to start writing a time lapse. And currently, we don't have a control for the rate at which we're writing our frames. We're writing our frames at one frame per second, one FPS. Uh, I'm going to ask Dr. Glover if he can implement a control for um, how frequently do we want to write out time lapses. Because even at one frame per, sec per second, played back 30 frames per second, the motion of Jupiter is pretty slow. Um, I do want to mention where this is being written out. This is being written out in your standard SharpCap Captures folder. So SharpCap Captures in the Capture folder. Today's date, you can see uh, a couple of other takes, but this is the uh, time lapse that I'm currently writing out. It is written in SIR format. I'm going to ask Dr. Glover if he can update that. It does not yet honor the output format up here. So if you change this to AVI, it still comes out in a SIR format. I'm going to ask him to change that so you can write out AVIs and immediately share them with people. Most people, if they're not used to planetary imaging, they don't know what a SIR file is. They don't have software that can play a SIR file. So just be aware of that. If you do want to play with this before um, it can directly write out AVIs, you can download PIP, P-I-P-P, -P, Planetary Imaging Preprocessor, I think is what that stands for. Um, that's this application right here. And PIP, you just drag it in here and you can change the format to AVI. I would probably do either lossless compression or maybe lossy compression to share that with people. And just real quick, remind you, that's what it looks like live. This is a good scene. I'm going to come over here and show you one more video. This is at f10. I'm going to grab this one, which was shot with a Barlow in at f13.8. You can see Jupiter looks a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to turn my live planetary enhancement back on. And you can see that Jupiter immediately starts stacking up frames. Maybe because I'm at 13.8, I'm a little dimmer. A little more noise, I'll increase my stack length to 2000 instead. And maybe I'll make some adjustments to my wavelet layers here. And you can see I shot this later because the red spot has rotated around. Europa is down here, just inside the frame. There's my collimation. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.